We are still in the MM1 system and we're going to derive L and W. L is related to the number of customers in the system. W is related to the time. You can think about the waiting time that people spend in our system. We are going to use the steady state probabilities that we've obtained in the previous video to calculate L and W. The exact definition for L is the average number of customers present in the queuing system. And for W, it is the expected time a customer, so just for one customer, the expected time a customer spends in the queuing system. We'll start by deriving L, which is the average number of customers present in the system. To find the average number of people, um, we say here that we multiply J people in the system times the probability that we see j people in the system. So j times pi j. So 0 times pi 0, 1 times pi 1, 2 times pi 2, and so on. It's the same thing when we want to find the average or the expected value of a random variable. And then because the system can have from 0 people up to infinity number of people, so um, we uh, take the summation from 0 to infinity okay and then because from the previous slide we have obtained that this is the formula for pi j so we replace this pi j here to become this thing here okay and then we take out the one minus rho because it doesn't have the um, index j so it can go out from the um, it can get out from the summation and here's uh, the formula for L. Now from the previous formula, we're going to simplify this part, the summation, because it contains the summation up to infinity, which is not very practical to calculate. What we're go going to do is to define that summation to become S prime. And then we will multiply this S prime with rho. So now become rho S prime. And then next we subtract S prime with rho s prime. So we subtract them and then this rho it remains intact over here. 2 rho squared minus rho squared we still have rho squared and then this 3 rho cube minus 2 times rho cube we still we will still have a rho to the power of 3 and so on. So then the summation of all this thing is rho over 1 minus rho. Now remember that first we um, represent that summation to become S prime and then from the previous slide if we simplify the final equation a little bit S prime equals this so we can replace this um, summation over here with this S prime. Now we obtain the formula to calculate L, which is 1 minus rho times, uh, this is the S prime part, and then we can simplify it further to become this, and then if we recall that rho is actually lambda over mu, we can also have this form to calculate L. So all this uh, formula, they may be used to calculate L. Now, other than L, we also have LQ and LS. Let's see what they are. The L that we've seen so far is talking about the number of customers present in the entire queuing system. So in this uh, illustration, it's uh, L is about all these people. However, we may break this down into two parts. The first part is these people who are still waiting in the queue, still waiting to be served. Okay, and these people, they are related to LQ. The one that is already in service is related to LS. We have this relation that uh, applies to all queuing system, not only for the MM1 system that we're talking about now. So for all queuing system, we have this um, relation here, L equals LQ plus LS. Let's derive LQ, the expected number of customers 
waiting in queue or line. We observe that in an MM1 system, if we have zero customer, then obviously nobody is waiting in line, right? If we have only one customer, then we also have uh, nobody is waiting in line because if we have one customer, that customer must be already served by the server. If we have J people and then J is greater than or equal to one, uh, we will have J minus one customers waiting in line. So if we exactly if we have exactly one customer, there will be zero customers waiting in line. So if we have J exactly equals one, we have zero customers waiting in line. If we have J two customers, then we have one customers waiting in line and so on. So here, if we have um, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight customers in the system, it must be that seven of them are waiting in line. Considering those observations, we may say that the average number of people waiting in queue equals j minus 1 times pi j. Remember that we have j minus 1 because if there are one customer, then the number of people waiting is 0. If we have two customers in the system, the number of people waiting is 1, and so on. That's why we have j minus 1, and do not forget to multiply it with the probability of we are seeing j people in our system. Okay, so finally we have this, LQ equals L minus rho, and then combine this with the previous formula that we have seen, also that rho equals lambda over mu. We have all these formulas that works to calculate LQ. Next, we are going to derive LS, the expected number of customers in service with a similar manner. Um, first, we observe that in an MM1 system, if we have zero customer, then obviously nobody is in service. But if there is one customer or more, then we have one customer is in service, right? Because whether we have one customer, two customers, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, then we must be having one customer um, is um, being served by the server. So based on those observations, we can calculate the number of people in service. So we have zero people in service if we have zero customer in the system. We have one customer in service if we have one customer in the system, two customers in the system, three customers in the system, and so on. So this is like taking the sum for all pies, but excluding pi zero. Because these pies are probabilities, we can say this is equal to one minus pi zero. And then this is the formula for pi zero that we've seen before. So we can say that LS equals rho. Now we can use this um, relation here when we have, let's say we have L and then we have LS, we may calculate LQ. So we have done talking about L, LQ, and LS, which are all related to the number of customers. Now let's talk about the time. W is the average time a customer spends in the system. Similar to L, it may be uh, divided into WQ and WS. WQ is the average time a customer spends in line or in queue. WS is the average time a customer spends in service. Again, same, uh, not same, but similar as before. We can say W equals WQ plus WS, and this applies to all queuing systems. Now let us derive WWQ and WS. We are going to obtain W using Little's queuing formula. So it says that for any queuing system in which a steady state dis distribution exists, the following relations hold. Basically, it says that L equals lambda times W, and it applies for L, LQ, and LS with the corresponding uh, LQ with WQ, and then LS with WS. So if this is L, then we have W that looks like that. If that is LQ, and then we have WQ, and here's the formula for WS. 
So here's what we've learned so far. We have this relation here that applies to all queuing system. We also have the Little's queuing formula that also apply to all queuing systems, not just MM1, as long as the steady state distribution exists for that system. Now here are the formulas that only apply to MM1. So these are the formulas that you may use, but these are only for MM1 queuing system. So that's all for this video. In the next one, we're going to do some exercise to practice with all this formula. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.